Yo, what is up, everybody? This is K-Rail, reporting live from my basement apartment in Park City, Utah. I'm the chief fitness advisor for Pine Pollen Superfoods and Train for Longevity. And this is the Pine Pollen Podcast. And I'm so super stoked today <laughs> to be interviewing the gentleman that's going to be on the line in two seconds, Mr. Troy Casey, none other, the great. One of the great people out there who's a freedom fighter, who's in it for you, who's out there to educate the world and the public on healthy living, healthy lifestyle, better sleep habits, better co human connection with people, and not being duped by lies and controversy <laughs> that you have no business listening to. He is also known as a certified health nut, and I can verify that, believe you me. I only interview people that are cool and on point with what we believe in. I firmly believe in this guy, and believe you me, people that tell me I have a lot of energy, this guy right here, he, he, he trumps me. And the fun thing about him is He's 50 years old and he's ripped. And he has a brand new book out called Ripped at 50. And I highly suggest you get your hands on this book. We'll talk about it later. We'll go a little bit more in the weeds about that. He's also an international speaker, a human high performance and transformation specialist. And he also studied holistic health nutrition at the world famous Czech Institute. Now, if you guys have not found out about this guy yet, I highly suggest you look him up immediately after this podcast is over with. Troy Casey, you don't want to miss out. We are going to talk smack right now, and we're going to go into the weeds, and we're going to be talking about some controversial subject matter as well. And I'm going to preface this. If you have any young children watching, parental discretion is going to be advised today because Troy pulls no punches, and there could be some coarse language going on. And I can't say I'm going to have no coarse language either. You never know what you're going to expect when I enter a room. So that being the case, Troy, thank you very much for joining us today. Do you have anything Thanks. you'd like to say before I go into a little bit deeper into the weeds? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, anyone who is uh, down for exploring human consciousness, I'm ready to talk anytime. And uh, I think it's a great time to be alive. Got the coronavirus uh, situation that's happening. And uh, I'm an eternal optimist. So uh, I think this is uh, a great time to be alive. Dude, I love it. And I love the shirt too. He, um, health nut, and I see the organic symbol right next to it. That's fantastic. Stating certified that, certified health nut certified health nut that's ingenious now i got to ask you what's and i know everyone's already thinking it what's in the green drink you're drinking right now this is organic wheatgrass spirulina activated barley carrot juice my, i work with my business partner david sandoval he dehydrates this for the last 27 years he's got farmland in utah up near you guys but far away on volcanic ash beds far away okay. from the city centers and they grow it and then they juice it and they powderize it and it comes down to uh, Compton to our organic facility uh, here, in, here in Los Angeles. And then it comes straight to your door. This business is actually crushing it right now because uh, everybody's looking at their health, their home. Um, yeah, it's a great time. And David Sandoval, his legacy was left. Um, Ann Wigmore, the mother of wheatgrass, left her legacy to my business partner, David Sandoval. So wheatgrass, baby, for the soul. <laughs> wow, that's quite an um, intro to this whole wheatgrass thing. So I know, like the back of my hand, why you're drinking that, what it's good for. But someone watching at home who has no clue why you're drinking this volcanic green-looking drink, tell them why you're drinking that drink right now. And I am asking you, is that your first meal of the day? Because I know you're, um, you mentioned fasting in one of your um, promos on your website. And I'm, we'll get down a little deeper into the fasting thing in a minute. But... Is that your first meal of the day or food of the day? And why would someone want to drink that kind of thing? Yeah, that is, that is my first meal of the day. Uh, I, have a, I have a, you know, for all you intermittent fasting people out there and people that practice fasting, there's many approaches to fasting. The definition of fasting is abstaining from any one or multiple of things. And so um, I do a calorie-restricted intermittent fast for the past 30 years or so. So I'll have like a mushroom coffee drink, coffee replacement, because I'm off the caffeine uh, for a while now, which I really like, by the way. Um, so I'll have, I'll have a mushroom drink or some kind of hot beverage in the morning uh, with a flush. So I do have some stuff. But this is the first, um, this is the first yeah, more calorie rich um, meals that I've had. And so the wheatgrass, I'll explain it like this. The wheatgrass energy from the sun is converted through photos, radiation from the sun. So harmful radiation from the sun is converted 
uh, through photosynthesis into chlorophyll. Chlorophyll has an exact match to your hemoglobin. Hemoglobin's red blood cells. It takes 120 days to rebuild your red blood cells. It takes six to nine months to regenerate your organs, depending on what you're feeding it. Now, the other part of the closed organic life cycle is the herbivores eat the plants, and then the omnivores eat the herbivores and the plants, and then everybody dies, and the carcasses go into the earth, where the earthward, earthworms and the nem ne nematodes and these other kind of bacteria mash everything up, and then the plants that are extremely carnivorous usurp those with the minerals, making the, the, the nutrients... Um, um, making the nutrients for the plant, and then the plant has its own unique phytochemistry. Whatever plant it is, whether it's aloe vera or cat's claw in the Amazon, and each one has a unique healing signature. Not all are edible, but each one has its own healing um, signature. And I know that just from working with herbs in the Amazon, uh, especially. And so that is the closed organic life cycle. That's nutrition in a, in a, in a nutshell. Um, and uh, and we're omnivores, so whatever we can basically ingest and adapt to, um, and whatever whatever's available, um, we can adapt to as well. Well, that's super interesting point you just made, and it just it just kind of turned a light bulb on inside my head, saying how bodies decompose, earthworms eat the de decomposition, bacteria forms, and then it kind of goes upward, and then it goes into the roots of the the plants out there. So by what, by, by what well, you're here, saying. Here, let me, and let me take, let me make a very important point. Okay. So if you end up being food for maggots, microbes, and other earthworms that were going to break your carcass down, then my advice to humans is create a strong body so you're not a host to these natural phenomena. So Anything that you see happening on the earth and the potential pandemic that we see here, I, I don't really see the, the, uh, 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 the pandemic as something uh, bad. I think it's overblown in the media, but Mother Nature has the potential to create something like that already, right? Mm -hmm. And so, Absolutely. so, and this is how my, Mother Nature keeps things in check. So my advice to human beings is make sure that you are strong till the day you die. So other things cannot colonize you and use you for nutrition. Even if that's mentally, emotionally, spiritually, hormonally, through the media and the way they're trying to control you and program you. You have to break free from that. Get back to the basics, right? We are a primal animal, right? First and foremost. So take care of that. And then you are a spiritual avatar. You can access the higher realms of consciousness through this physical body. And grounding into the two. But it's not a good idea to be having too many people try to control that because then you don't have your own freedom of, or dominion to find your connection to source. And so that's what we're seeing that's happening right now, uh, in my humble opinion, on the geopolitical uh, scape. I think that humanity is being freed right now. We're going through a consciousness evolution. And... Um, it's a good idea to understand that your mind has been colonized by thoughts of the industrial age, which there's nothing wrong with it, right? I drive a car, live in a house, got some plumbing, some hot water too, you know? <laughs> kings, and queen, kings and queens didn't have that, you know, they were the only ones who had the luxury of that back in the, you know, 17, 18, you know, 17, 1600s or so. So not far back. Right. And so I do benefit from the industrial age. My point is, is it's time to change. And I think that change is coming right now. We all want the change. We all know we need the change. The way we're treating the environment with the Flint, Michigans and the, and the oil spills everywhere. It's time to upgrade. Otherwise, we're going to be eating shit. We're going to be eating oil. Right. I, <laughs> yeah. worked in the, I, I worked in the I worked in the Amazon, the oil companies. They spilled down there big mm -hmm. time. And so and they would just leave it down there. And so we've got to solve all our problems because we're all interconnected. That's, that's a big part of my message. And don't be a host. Make sure that you're strong and clear so that the parasites, fungus, bacteria, viruses don't come and get you. But the biggest virus you've got to pay attention to is the mind virus being sold to you 
by the programming that you've adopted, especially your schooling. And now the media just, just keeps trying to reiterate that. The good thing is the social media is here. And you can now flip that on and see a person that's not dancing to the beat of that drum. You know, 70% of the American people are obese or overweight. So just by flipping on the internet and finding someone that's not that person, you know, right there, you've got a level of authenticity where they can connect with something that's beyond just predictive programming, which is what television's been for many years. And we also do have to watch it with the Google and the Facebook because then the algorithms are controlled. And so you're always being programmed to what to think. Your algorithms, your phone picks up your voice. They send you these messages, and these advertisements, and, and the messages you get on social media. Are, that's why, like, don't play with their algorithms. Anything that you like, you're going to get more of. Anything that you don't like. So, so do a lot less activity or don't do the norm stuff because you want to trick the AI <laughs> if you can. <laughs> <laughs> right Dude. that's the little game i th- here, let me let me tell you this one little philosophy i think Go. siri i think siri is the biggest piece of shit ai <laughs> in the world but you want to know why i right, told they want they want the pissed off reaction yeah they want to get all that information because google the google ai is amazing you speak anything into google and they're like here's your answer and then and then siri gets it wrong like 90 percent of the time yeah true so anyhow, that's my own little half-baked uh, wow. theory. Wow, that, that right there. That's exactly why you're a guest today because I love everything you just had to say. And what I call that is, is a very eye-opening experience. But I have this term called a mulabanda bitch slap. That's what you just gave all of us. And it's when <laughs> you get like this big high on your face and you're just like, and you don't even think about something until someone like you steps up and starts talking about it. And you get eyes open and ears open and mouths dropped. And I was reading some of that content you mentioned on your website earlier, and I'm like, this guy rocks. I can't wait to talk to him. So I always try to encourage people to think for themselves and to not be blindsided yes. by half-truths or like all the media and all the hype and stuff like that. I never watch the news, never. And then I'll ask someone to, out on the street or like a text, like someone's like, oh my God, check out blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm checking out anything. Just, just give me a report. And I get all my information from just, just like you said, like either social media or people send me things and then I, I read it or I'll evaluate it and I'll see if it makes sense or not. And you kind of been jumping the gun back and forth here on some certain topics I wanted to talk about. But the big, the big first thing I wanted to ask you was, what is your thoughts on the coronavirus? And you kind of went down that rabbit hole a little bit, but I want you to expand on it. Like you, you said, you mentioned some I mean, word political and you mentioned some stuff. Now I've been hearing all kinds of scuttlebutt in different directions about people. Some are saying it's a conspiracy. Some are saying it is as bad as it is. I've been getting slammed on social media for speaking my mind on certain things. And people are like, you're making jokes out of a pandemic and you're a horrible human being and you should delete this from the thing and blah, blah. I'm like, I'm just... Yeah, right? Tina Gallery. No, it's not. (laughs) You're wrong. (laughs) Yeah, so... You're wrong. (laughs) That's exactly what I felt like. So I'm curious what you think. What is your take? So, Yes your head will spin if you get all the information on the internet and you try and put it together. So there's a lot going on. So the way I do is I take information from both sides. I look at what's happening. I like watching geopolitics. So I've been following the president uh, pretty closely for the last two and a half years, at least through the QAnon posts. I want to be honest. A lot of people think that those are psyops as well. You know, I, I don't care, but you can see everything playing and I'm an energy guy. So I've been praying for this time for a very long time. I, I've been saying that humanity is going to go through a quantum leap in consciousness. Mm-hmm. People are like, and I, and I call forth you know, free energy, gift economy, self-care education, and permaculture. And people want to argue, you know, I say we're going to be a world beyond money, a world beyond oil in a very short amount of time. That will never happen in my lifetime. The quantum leap, even my spiritual friends, what does that mean? And quantum, quantum mechanics is you know, the cutting edge of science right now. It's not airy fairy stuff. It's just matching up to what all the spiritual teachings have said in the past. It's just that we've got the observation for that right now. So the coronavirus, whether you look at it as a virus or whether it's happening to the whole planet's on lockdown right now, this is, to me, is just the part of the transformation of consciousness. 2020 represents uh, clear vision, inner vision. 
And so when we came into this year, because I had been studying this for a long time, I, I said, this is, this is the year. I can taste it. I can feel it. And I, you never know how that's going to shake out. But what are we dealing with right now? We're, everybody's in lockdown. Everybody gets to think about their life. Everybody gets to be with their family. They get to be with the sum total of their creations because we're, if it gets worse, the, that, this is the life that you've created so far. Could you do more? So people are really on an inside journey right now. Perfect. Spiritually perfect, right? On an outward side, you've got this COVID virus. Now, was it created by the Chinese? Was it created by the Americans? Was it created for biowarfare? Was it transferred from bats? Uh, statistically, they're freaking out on, on, the, on, the, on the news reports, but statistically, uh, it's in, insignificant compared to tuberculosis and you know drunk driving deaths and all that stuff. Right now, it's, it's, it's statistically, it's a nothing burger, and they're blowing it out of propor proportion. Which also, if you know anything about the nocebo or the placebo effect, that um, whatever your mind thinks it is, it is. Mm -hmm. And so, so people are spinning out. And um, um, the way I operate is to tell my consciousness to face anything that I'm, come, I'm, I'm here with. And a man, traditionally, in my opinion, um, knows what's on the horizon to eat. We have instinctual elements and what's going to eat us, right? So yeah. you, you, got, you got to provide, right, sustenance, and then you also got, got to protect, right? So this is, this is instinctually in us. So we're not dealing with the wild anymore. Right. Although I had my pine pollen this morning, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not dealing with the wild anymore, but those are, are, are in us. So what is trying to invade us? What is trying to invade our consciousness? Uh, what is trying to colonize our consciousness, making us weak? <laughs> That's Sorry, a nice I'm, little <laughs> plug for your book there. I'm, I'm losing power. Hold on. Can you hear oh, me? No. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, now I've got a sound issue with you. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Uh-oh. Okay, hold on. Make sure the mute button isn't um, pressed down. No, I know, but I need... Uh, Energy? Oh, God. I'm losing power oh, where I was. Sorry yes. about that. We had a little bit of technical difficulties. All right, Troy, take the floor back. Yeah, so your primal instincts are to know what's to eat, what, what sustenance to, to continue your life, and what you need to protect you against somebody that wants to take you out. And mm -hmm. so there are higher entities with thought forms or whatever. They want to ride your consciousness. And so you want to make yourself strong enough no matter what. And again, if you look at the placebo and the nocebo effect, it works both ways. You think you got it or you think you don't. Mm -hmm. Right? So <laughs> start programming your mind that you can handle whatever is out there. Because if you don't, here's the situation. You're fucked, right? You're going to get eaten by a bigger predator. Yeah. So you got to be strong. You got to be clear. You got to be not expecting the government to protect you. Clearly, they put poison in food. Yeah. And that's cool. And that's all okay with business and FDA and, you know, USDA and all this stuff. It's all cool, but it, what's it doing? It's giving us 70% obesity rates right now. So trust them for about as far as you could throw a grand piano and be strong yourself, right? Be strong in everything that you can do. Obviously, I wrote my book, Rift to 50, Journey to Self-Love. This is not about my physique. This is about what's possible when you apply these principles. This picture was actually photographed when I was 53. And so when you were um, what? How old? 53. I'm 54. Oh, I'll be damned. So, so what you want to do is apply as many of these nature based principles into your own biology, psychology, and physiology. And so then you can have dominion over yourself. You reclaim your divinity. And once you're there, then you can understand what's what. And you start praying into existence that which you wish to see. No different from the Wright brothers wanting to fly like an eagle. Right. So pray into existence instead of talking bad about the government or expecting it to go to hell or, you know, all this stuff. Start. What do you really want? What 
what, dude, all human beings, let me give you the common denominator, guys. We all want peace. Yeah. Right? That's, that's not just a John Lennon song. We all want peace. Okay? Trust me. T tap into your heart and ask you what. Okay. And then, and then go, okay, what's going to bring me peace right here, right now? Turn off the fucking television, first and foremost. <laughs> you know, like, let's just cut the shit. You know, even all the... <laughs> Like even all the little Disney things that you think are like, okay, there's so much programming and cartoons uh, that goes into your subconscious mind and teaches you about scarcity and teaches you about, you know, there's, there's some creepy stuff that's in that. So you should, you should watch what you allow actually into your mind and repetition and music as well. You want to, you want to, you want to, you want to you, you watch all those things because that's part of your programming. Mm-hmm. So, and then from there, you know, you're definitely going to want to program yourself with good stuff, right? So what does that mean? Hydration, nutrition, sleep. Sleep is your friend, man. Uh, yeah. Hey, man, have you caught up on your sleep since the coronavirus? Because I have. I've been sleeping it's like a rock. <laughs> I'm like, I'm good to go. <laughs> I saw that. I read that on your website. I was laughing. I'm like, dude, I say it all the time, the importance of sleep. And it can't be stressed enough. It's when like... Your body goes into full recovery mode. It's when muscles actually built. It's not when you're pressing weights in the gym and beefcaking it up. Oh, yeah. HGH increases. That boosts your immune system. It helps with recovery. Your body goes into, you know, your organs go into buffer mode and stuff. That's why I'm strongly against eating late at night and also trying to get the best sleep you can. And I saw that on your website and I was smiling. I'm like, yeah, he knows. I mean, you, you got to dial, bro. And that thing you said earlier about living like you're in possession. But of how about sunlight? Sunlight activates your... Your oh yeah as well man dude i know it's awesome vitamin d i love sun my body loves sun you know i yeah. you, and you know what i've gained like 10 pounds sitting in my house well I, it, that, that's not the truth i mean i'm married i'm i remarried my ex-wife and uh so oh. I'm, eat, I'm eating a little bit more steady the coronavirus has me a little less active i mean i'm def i used to definitely at least hit the gym and ride my bike everywhere and there's, there's a little bit of that, but, uh, I think my muscles and tendons are enjoying the rest mm -hmm. and, uh, I get out there and do Qigong and barefoot walking as much as I can. But, I'm a barefoot uh, runner. I know about it. It's awesome. You are? Yeah. I'm a barefoot runner. Yeah. Oh, that's a big deal, dude. Yeah. It's awesome. That's it's all big. about the grounding. It's not, it's not even like when I taught myself how to run barefoot years ago, it was due to like the whole package deal. It's like, it's so much better for you, the impact on your body, because the impact disappears. People always tell me like, oh my God, that's terrible for your joints and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, I'm adding years to my life by running barefoot because I don't hit yep. the ground like you hit the ground with it, that heel strike over and over again with those big, fluffy, thick ass shoes that are worthless. Yep. I hit with a four foot strike and I just land softly like this, like a baby. And that takes all the pressure away from your joints. And you're asking a your question, how, because I've been trying to do that, bro. And I tore, <laughs> I tore up my friggin' calves. My, my one friend, Chaba Lucas, that does that, he trains people to do 100, 100 mile races in the Kalahari Desert. Holy with, shit. <laughs> yeah, with, with, with that stuff. Uh, he told me you do have to train barefoot. Is that true? Uh, like, uh, you, can't, you can't do it with any shoes on yeah, when you're starting out. Bare is a baby's ass. But the thing is, you don't just rip off your shoes and run barefoot. It, it usually takes 12 to 18 months to transition from shoes to no shoes. So you have to build a tolerance up and, you, and the reason your calves are getting torn to shreds is because your, your foot is conditioned to a certain length of distance that's going to the ground. So when you wear shoes every day, your heel is actually elevated like this. Okay. I'm, I'm exaggerating. So your yeah. calf stays that way for long periods of time, and it gets yeah. precondi preconditioned to that length. So if you right. take your shoes off and try to run, your calves are going to get destroyed. You're, you're going to be in yeah. pain for probably a week. So you have to slowly... Yeah. Work your way down to a thinner and thinner sole until eventually it gets like a one millimeter shoe, like a Vibram five finger or something. Then you go to those and then you take them off and then you start going barefoot short distances. And then you just how long, that, how long does that take? It took me about six months to go from shoes to none, but, but I was doing a lot of training to do that. And I did a lot of extra um, additional things to get to that point. But the average person, it could take anywhere from 12 to 18 months to go from one to the other. But you mentioned wow. grounding. And that's, that's a big motivator for me. To, that was a big motivation for me to go into it, too, is, is the connectivity of the ground. You know I'm friends with Mick Dodge, yeah? No, I didn't know that. You know Mick? I heard of him. He's the barefoot sensei. Yeah. He, re he renounced shoes. And then he was up on top. He was on top of the glacier. He was on top of the glacier. And uh, 
there was a huge blizzard and he renounced his shoes, but he's like, you better get some fucking shoes on. You know, remember when I said, what's on the horizon to eat you or what's going to eat you? Yeah. And he, spiritually, he told himself, oh, your ego is so big that you think you don't need shoes. Well, what are you going to do now? So he took off his elk skin sleeves and he made shoes and he, he it was a three day, three day trek down the, down the glacier. Oh my um, God. And so, but dude, he's done, he's, he grew up up there. He's trained in glacier water. Mick Dodge is the dude, bro. He's the barefoot sensei. Wow. I'm going to have to follow him a little closer. Sounds like a cool chap to me. Well, National Geographic did 39 episodes on him. So watch they, those. Really? Yeah, it's, it's good. He's funny. I gotta He's check a bro, it out. dude. He's a bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do. Um, so I got a question for you before we leave the coronavirus topic. Um, do you feel that there is a like two second cure for it or like a, a defense mechanism that everyone is completely overlooking and no one's even looking at. Cause I feel the answers to our problems are always no more than an arm's reach away, regardless of what they are. So do you think, um, if you were to say there's a defense mechanism or some kind of immunity for it, um, off the record, we're not making any claims here. We're not doing anything that's going to like incriminate anybody. Hey, is that your wife? Yep. Hi. She she's can come over and say hello. She's, like, <laughs> she's a little she's shy. shy today. Okay. But anyway, if you were to say, like, from your personal experience of the world and of life and, like, your own, your own underpinnings and stuff, would you say there's, like, one thing maybe that could possibly be, like, a hope in, in like, the defense against the coronavirus? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Well, hit me. What is it? What do you think? Again, we're that's just two your, dudes talking here. We're not making any claims. We're just two guys talking. That's your health. Mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Spiritually, when you understand there is no death and you face your imminent spiritual spacesuit expiration date, then you realize that you want to take care of what you have for as long as you have it. Mm -hmm. And the more you can elevate your vibration and consciousness and connect to the deeper elements, the more you can raise your vibration. That makes all the sense in the world. So you're saying it's a package deal, which kind of is the direction that you I- You gotta get, the first step is getting, getting your mind right. Are you watching the TV? Is that where you're getting your information from? What does your intuition, what does your, what does your gut say? You know, what do I say? Not what does everybody else say, what do I say? And then you get clear on that. Then you get clear on a little bit of statistics. There's not that many people dying. I've cruised by my hospital. There's nobody there, right? It's, oh, it's really? the, the, yeah, the media is blowing it way out of proportion. Mm -hmm. And look, I'm happy to be proven wrong. And uh, I respect everyone who's gotten it. Look, statistically, it's no worse than the flu. So until that changes, until I see body bags, look, I'm, I'm prepared to help and, and, and lift body bags if I have to, right? Yeah. I just don't see that that's a problem. I talk to the cops. Everything's chill. Everybody's home. Everything's chill. You go out a little bit and you start connecting with people and people are getting a little bit weird. But people all just have this time to reflect. I live right next to a, a Burger King. and, and uh, Well, but that's a fun. That's, you probably do some fun people watching there, watching people walk out with like three bags in each hand of food, distributing it out to their families and stuff. Well, it's open because of the drive-thru. Oh. oh, of course. What am I thinking? So I got a liquor store over here, and then they closed, they closed the, the, re the restaurant down. I think you can get drive through for there. And then, and then here's a, you know, I live in Los Angeles, so it's, it's, a, it's a big city. But I got a, I got a gas station across the street. And then I've got a, a halfway house over here. And these guys are like zombies because they got them all on methadone and suboxone and, and, and they're all drinking on the side of the street anyhow. And oh, <laughs> that's geez. a weird... That's that's a that's a big cocktail. That's a so, big red flag. Well, you know what? It's part of our society, and that's why I'm calling forth. We've got to solve all our own problems. But COVID virus, be strong, be impervious. Bruce Lee, you know, used to teach the the Iron Shirt. You can do the Iron Fist training as well. You know, they put the the razor sharp spear up at the dude's throat, and he blocks his chi, and you can't get in. You can't penetrate his clavicle. That, that's already what's possible. So start 
adopting some of those ideologies. Or otherwise, here's here's if you want to do this, play the victim, worry about everything, and, and attract more uh, worry. And, Your mind well, attracts that which it's programmed to. Correct. If you think about and, lack, you have more and, lack. Worry and then and then and then they're going to be able to sell you the vaccine. And I would look at the ingredients and see how poisonous those things are, and then. Um, Look at the other agendas behind that, the 1986 Act, which exonerates uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing companies against any kind of liability for vaccines. It's the only uh, law in the world for, that, uh, uh, for corporations to be exonerated from liability of their products. That was 1986. That shows you that they're in bed with the government. And so this, is, this has all got to change. And so... Um, and if you want to get those vaccines, invest the ingredients. But that's what they want to play you with fear. So, and just know that everything's going to be all right. As of today, I heard that Trump took back the Federal Reserve and is going to put it in the, the U.S. Treasury, where it belongs, because the Federal Reserve was no different from Federal Express. It was a private corporation, a central bank. And so, what if I told you, you guys, your debt was forgiven? And landlords and businesses are going to be injected with all sorts of cash to lift and bolster ourselves up. And then we're going to rebuild America the way it was, bring everything home. And, and, and how about this? Technologically advanced, beyond oil, beyond. Trump posted on his Twitter the other day that he wants the innovation to come back to the United States. And we're going to start making more environmentally safe cars. Because right now that. we're not. We're yeah. not. We're exporting everything out to China. And look what that did. It, it totally, the pollution that, that happened over there within 15 years, bro, I was, a, I, I was on this planet when you saw pictures of China back in the day. Bicycles, dude. Everybody had bicycles. Now they got little cars and black uh -huh. skies. <laughs> wow. Dude, I saw a picture of LA a couple weeks back, like two days clean. after. Clean. Clean as can be, like the first time in like 200 years or something. I was like, wow, look at how beautiful that is and clear. You see blue sky in LA. That must have been amazing. Have the yeah, skies gotten clear? Are they still clear? Yeah, believe in that miracle. Absolutely. <laughs> believe in the good things. Exactly. What do you want to you know, do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? You want to listen to the, the news and then, and then go, yeah, well, we're going to get it. Well, going to get infected. You're infected. Yeah. You know, it's like, just like think another thought, you know? Go listen to some good music. Go do some yoga. You know, go for a run while you still can. <laughs> right? Uh, that's exactly how I've looked at the whole thing. I'm like, what, the, where what's I know the what the bad is, I'm like, what's the good? Or what good can we create out of this? What's the solution? I've been out picking up oh. trash all day. We're still oh, getting oh, snow yeah, yeah. out here. Yeah. But when it's not snowing, I'm out picking up trash. And I'm outside okay. connecting with other nature. Yeah. It's, it's all good, in my little humble opinion. I'm going to come inside. Yeah. I do believe that everything happens for a purpose and everything you said about this going, I think we're just going through a, a universal reboot through the yep. whole universe. And, and we're being forced out of our comfort zone. And in, like you said, a lot of people are doing some really deep thinking right now. There's like divorces happening left and right. There's spousal really? abuse. Yeah. There's, there's spousal abuse going on. Suicides are happening and all these crazy <sighs> things. But there's also the other side of the coin where new relationships are developing and close ones are. And I really feel that you're going to see who your true friends are at this time frame. I've seen it right before my eyes already. And I think it's only going to get higher and higher. And like, yeah, suicide rates are jumping off the charts right now. Businesses going down. People can't handle it. People who are already suffering from some form of, of mental disability or, or instability, I should say, are not able to handle it really well. And really weird things are happening. But I think this is like just a big, huge reboot of around the whole world. Now, wait a second. Really weird things are happening. Is this being promoted on the nightly news? No, I'm just seeing it from random places. I, I'm looking for the information. I don't, yeah. I don't watch the news. I, don't, I never watch it. People yell at me all the time. You need to stay informed. You need to do this. And they're poking me in the chest and yelling at me. I'm like, I don't need to do a damn thing. All I need to do is get up in the morning, work out for an hour and a half, and try to do good deeds all day long. And that's all I do, and it's all I focus on. And I'm like, yeah, dude, you're, you're my hero. Can I be friends with you? I told you. I'm like, I don't know how I haven't met you before because we think a lot alike. And I'm like, I'm just doing what, I, what you know, I'm going to bridge the gap from now until when this thing ends. I'm going to look for solutions and I'm going to help as many people as I can. I'm going to jump in the trenches. I'm going to put them on my shoulders. I'm going to carry them the hell out of there. And for all those people 
where fear is in control, I feel sorry for him because fear is the big pandemic in my opinion right now, not the coronavirus. As long as you are careful and you wash your hands and yeah, you follow the guidelines. I mean, come on. I don't need to harp on that every but single this day. Is, I don't need people shoveling down my throat every single day. And it drives this me crazy. It's spiritual warfare. It is. That's what it is, brother. And yeah. people should read the, read the book of Revelations and understand the, the number of the beast a little bit better if they try and roll out this vaccine RFID chip you know, uh, uh, global ID, right? Mm -hmm. You just carry it right inside your body. So, um, and voting by mail and all that stuff. Like there's some people that are up to no good. The way I see it though, is listen to the, never listen to the news, listen to the press briefings from the White House, directly from the horse's mouth. That's if good. you want to understand, yesterday's was amazing. That general that stood up there and said, anybody that's going to try and loot or make money or harm Americans, fucking think again. First of all, if you're trying to get in to the United States of America, you're fucked. Don't <laughs> think about it. And, and, and if you're on your way, you're fucked, <laughs> right? So, and I like that, I'm an American, and I don't like the way our military industrial complex has been used for the last 60 years for people's proxy wars and, and um, or even more, maybe even over 100 years, proxy wars, oil wars, and so I, I choose to see things uh, change. And I do believe that central banks is an important thing. And all this seems to be unraveling. Trump is talking about the coronavirus, but actually he's talking about the deep, the deep threat, the deep dark forces that are really have the stranglehold. That's what he's talking about. So listen to what he's saying about the coronavirus and then look at the dark spiritual forces. And, he's, mm -hmm. and there's physical representations of those that, that, are, that are on this planet. Mm -hmm. I've been somewhat of an activist and conscious and talking about food and doing protests, didn't want the Iraq war and Hollywood here. So I've been fairly active for, for, for a while and I, I never saw anything change. Uh, and now I see something big changing. And uh, just listen to those reports and take them like there's a dark force, man, because that's that's what it is. And remember, anything externally is internally representative too. So where do we have dark forces within ourselves? That's a that's a eureka moment. There's another Mulubanda bitch slap right there. <laughs> it's a perfect one. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit right now because I heard I saw on your site, I believe that's read it on your site, where you used to be vegan, and then you went back to eating meat. Now, I want to know what your take, what, what's your philosophy on like diets? Do you have a specific thing that you follow, a certain regimen that you follow every day? I assume you're, yeah, I know you're organic, you eat clean, you eat healthy, you got all the, the supplement connections, but from a personal standpoint, what, what is your philosophy on diet? What do you think is like, would you say is a gold standard or, or the best approach? What's your best approach? And what would you recommend to the people watching out there today to, to do? Because I have I my very specific approach, but I'm curious yours is. Yeah, so um, I have I like to practice the way of no way as much as I can. I mean, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm I'm no fucking Zen master, Bruce Lee, right? <laughs> but but I'll, but I'm gonna work on it, right? So uh, eat 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 whatever the hell you want, mm -hmm. as long as it's real food. Okay. Eat, Good eat when eat when you're hungry. Good. And, and call it a day. Now, now defining whole foods, I did that on a video on my, on my diet playlist. So it's the hashtag no diet diet, right? And I explained bio, wild, biodynamic, all the way down through USDA and GMO and commercial and then GMO and stuff. And so, um, and then eat when you're hungry, because everybody's trying to tell you how to eat and what to eat. And it's like, most people are gluten intensive. Here, here's, here's, the, here, here's the exact diet you need to eat. You ready? It's called organic food. <laughs> I right? call it the common sense diet, but it's probably the same as your organic food diet. <laughs> but go ahead. Yeah, it's the common sense diet. Or, so yeah, and meat or no meat, I mean, I couldn't sustain my body without having problems. And clinically, I see with a lot of clients, they don't do so well on it. They're usually coming to me for problems. 
And I've rescued many malnourished vegans over the years off of the internet. Because I've watched the social media phenomena mm -hmm. and I've watched the crazies out there and I've watched you know, the fat vegans, the skinny vegans, like everybody's just preaching everything. And I'm like, all right, okay, great. I, you know, it didn't work for me, but if it works for you, let's see it. That's all I want to do. I just want to see it. You know, Robert Kassar, Robert Kassar was raw food vegan for a while and he came from bodybuilding. So he kind of figured out how to get his terrain and his muscles to look good. And he looked great. But whenever he was on the social media with the vegan tip, I was like, I agree with a lot of his detoxification things and stuff, mm -hmm. but I was just like, if I get stuck on that conversation with a vegan, meat or no meat, then the conversation's pretty much over. Because as far <laughs> as they're concerned, you're fucked. And <laughs> if you're you talking know. to an elitist vegan, yeah. And anyone can go down that rabbit hole of becoming too dogmatic with their dietary approach. And in October, I decided to go a full year plant-based vegan. And I'm in month six right now. And um, I'm feeling... Fantastic. But much yep. like that guy you were talking about, the, the bodybuilder, um, raw food vegan guy, I figured it out. I've cracked the code, but it's because of my experience with food and nutrition that I know exactly what to eat, how to eat, when to eat, and all that kind of stuff. And if you're just schmo out there shoving your initiatives down people's throats saying, you've got to go vegan because, or you have to eat meat because, or you got to go carnivore, you have to do paleo, you have to do keto. I right. think that's all crap. I that's, think the you, blind, that, that's the blind leading the blind. Exactly. And, that, and that's what you see all over the internet. Mm -hmm. And so and you, you got to be able to so, find out what works for you. And the other thing I was going to say, Kevin, is, is six months is a great cleansing period. Mm -hmm. Vegan diet for six months, I think anybody can do and feel amazing. Keep close on your hormones, your musculature levels, all that stuff. You know, look in the mirror and do it for as long as you, you want to do it. But just always be honest with yourself. Remember, I explained the closed organic life cycle earlier, right? Yeah, and so exactly. herbivores eat the omnivores. That is it. Life eats life. Accept mm -hmm. it. Death is a part of life. Now go out and kick ass, right? <laughs> yep. it, you know, and so, and don't be a host, right? Life eats life. Okay, you got that? Okay, now kick ass. Handle it, <laughs> right? And I think the bottom do line. No harm. Do no harm. <laughs> That's always bottom line. I like what you said about helping people because if you're out there helping people, guess what? You're out there helping yourself because if everyone's healthy, then we don't have to tell other people not to shit in the water, right? <laughs> like don't shit in the water that the tribe is drinking. <laughs> that right? should be common that's, sense. That's not a good idea. <laughs> well, I've got all these scientific papers that say it's a great idea. <laughs> and this is scientifically validated. It's on the CDC and the WHO. This is the truth. Well, it's gotta be true well, it's on their sites. I just, I just disagree that shitting in the river doesn't pollute the river, okay? Anyways. Well, hey, man, it's bacteria. It's coming from somewhere. Well, I mean, like, yeah. I always say you have to create awareness in what, what your body can and can't handle. People are just, like, give up gluten because they heard it's fashionable or they think they're going to lose weight. I'm like, okay, so you're telling me that you eat a bag of pretzels every two days. And now you're going to get a bag of gluten-free pretzels and you're going to eat that same bag of pretzels every two days and you're expecting to lose weight. Is that what you're telling me? Well, yeah, because blah, 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 the office went gluten-free and they lost weight. I'm like, blah, 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 your office went gluten-free and they gave up all the grains and the crap they were eating. And that's why they lost weight. And they went to more of a plant-based diet. So if you want to lose weight and you can eat gluten, then I suggest you continue eating gluten, but just eat good, clean yeah. sources of it. Yeah. Right? Maybe some sourdough. The Neanderthal sourdough. Love it. The, the, like, I had a big thing. I'm, I'm home, coronavirus. My, my wife brings home some sourdough. I'm like, fuck it. I'm sitting around anyways. Let me eat bonbons. Like, <laughs> for, me, for me, bonbons is, you know, sourdough bread. And, of course, I get out the Kerrygold butter, right? And so I'm yeah. piling the butter on. Because I can eat bread if it's got plenty of fats on it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a high oxidizer. I know that about myself. Yeah. Uh, but still, it gave me a stomachache. You know, oh. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the best with that type of stuff. And so I'm best on meat and veggies, meat and veggies, and then superfoods, juice. I've been juicing for 31 years. Mm -hmm. That's so, awesome. Herbs, like the pine pollen stuff, either tinctures or dried herbs. Um, I just eat those usually all day long. I don't have macro meals until about three or – I try and do maybe night. Maybe I'll have a snack around two or three. Okay. That sounds rad.
Now, let me ask you this question. I, I watched your video on YouTube this morning and I was like, holy crap, there's no way I could have went six minutes of that breathing technique that you did. And I Wait realized- Wait a second, what? No, the one, on, the one on Instagram? No, YouTube. You had a YouTube video I watched this morning. It looked like you just posted it. I could have sworn it said April 2nd. Where you were breathing, you were going, <sighs> you're doing that breathing technique? Wasn't yeah. that, did you just make that video? I just did that on, I don't, my team is releasing my videos for me. And oh, so, it might have been a true uh, video. A and, video. Uh, but I just did one live before I got on with you. I was on Instagram, breathing my ass off. Okay, well, it may have been, maybe they just posted it onto your YouTube page or something right after, but it was, you were doing like a six minute breathing protocol. Is that the one? Okay. And I was like, yeah. wow, <laughs> I probably couldn't have made it six minutes the way you were doing that. But I found it very interesting and it, and it struck a chord with me because I know of the benefits of deep breathing and like boosting your NO2 naturally through breathing. And then when you got done, you took this big deep breath and you're doing some stretches and expanding your thoracic spine. Yeah. And I was blown away by all that because I'm, I'm a biohacker. So I'm always trying to figure out how to reverse oh, nice. aging process and like do the, the things. And I know breathing has a lot to do with that. And that really deep diaphragmatic breathing you were doing, I also have reason to believe that it boosts your, your testosterone HGH to the root too. And I was asking, okay. I want to know. Uh, all right. I, I, think, I think I got some of that in my, in my physiology and biology because I'm not a gym rat. So, okay. I, well, I was going to say. I think it's doing something. I was going to say, is the breathing technique you were doing there, is that like one of the main things you do to obtain the body you have? Because you're, you're in great shape. I want to know some of your like fitness angles. Like what, what's kind of like your fitness philosophy or like what, what's like a strong piece of advice you would give people that are not even just 50 plus, but any age, but especially upper, upper in age, like, like 40 plus, 50 plus. What would you say is like one of your, your big, I don't want to call it a secret because it's not really a secret. But what, what's something you stand by that keeps you in the shape you're in or gets you in the shape you're in? Is it like high intensity interval training? Is it the breathing method that I saw you doing? Is it just body weight exercise? Is it off the ground training with pull-up bars? Like what, kind of like what does your regimen look like? So you're talking about movement, right? Yes. Which is, which is one of the nine pillars that's in my new book, hashtag ripped at 50. <laughs> this okay. has, this, I created this body. I created this body by, and there's no Photoshop there. I put some sacred geometry, but there's no Photoshop there. I created that and I had injuries from black mold as well. That's right, I read about that. And I'm like, shit, dude, you're lucky to be alive. That's nasty. So, um, and I had kids and I got exhausted and I did a big fat juice cleanse in 2007 on a spiritual journey um, to the Amazon. Lost some muscle and never built it back. And so uh, I got back in the game and so I had to heal from black mold and then stack muscle, right? Mm -hmm. At all through like from 49 to 53, right? Okay. To, write that, to write that book. And so it's everything is compounded, right? There is no special diet, clean food, organic food, right? That's, what, that's what's going to replicate your eyeballs and your nose hairs and your spinal cord, right? Mm -hmm. right. Your cells are, re cells are constantly replicating. So high quality nutrients, first and foremost. Uh, and then movement, I do a lot of de-stressing exercises because most of us are facing burnout just from the, there's seven factors of stress that we're dealing with. And one of the biggest invisible ones is your digital stress. Most people don't factor that in, but that has a, that has a, a, a stress response on your nervous system. And so when we can manage and mitigate those and then do the exercise that is best for you because exercise is a stress. That's how you grow through the stimulus. Right. And so when you have uh, walking is the best exercise on the planet for the human being. It's the way we're designed to move through time and space. It's very rhythmic. It'll balance the brain. It'll improve circulation, et cetera. And so, um, so that's the best exercise if you can get into something consistent like that. But I do weightlifting. I do walking. I do Qigong. I do a lot of Qigong. I do a lot of mobility stuff. I do a lot of breathing. Breathing is another pillar in my book. I have nine pillars. So hydration, nutrition, sleep, movement, uh, breathing, uh, legacy, uh, your relationships, and, uh, and, and ultimately nature in all of its facets. Those are the nine pillars. And you water those each day, right? Everyone needs a little bit of nutrition. And so uh, you're going to get more mileage out of managing and mitigating your stress hormones, 
right? So the sex hormones, the androgens, the testosterone, the HGH can come out and play. If you've got elevated cortisol, they're not going to come out and play. So right. first and foremost, lower your stress levels. Hey, newsflash, you want to boost your immune system? Lower your stress levels. So there you go. Everywhere you work, lower your stress levels. And guess what? You're not working right now right? The coronavirus, whatever's happening is happening. So you have plenty of time to, to go inside, get off the TV and just start, get on your yoga mat and do something. Roll around, stretch it out, foam roller. Hey, there is no major quarantine. You can go for a walk around the block, right? You could do that. And that feels good. Being yeah. out in the sun, God forbid you live near a park where you can take off your shoes and get in the sun at the same time. Woo! You're going, <laughs> you're going to the moon and you get in bed around 9, 30, 10. Holy shit, your life's going <laughs> to accelerate really fast. And you sourced out good water because you listened to you, right? Because you told your clients to get good water. Yep. They listen to you. And then, and, then, and then what else did they do? Oh, unpro unplug the, pro the, the TV and then question your own thoughts. How many of those negative thoughts that I'm having that's giving me anxiety are mine? Where did I get those thoughts from? Oh, what's the answer to... to, to uh, to mimetic viruses, brain viruses, well, meditation. Well, there you go, meditation. Hypnosis, whoa, hypnosis. YouTube, free hypnosis, right? You can go on YouTube for free hypnosis. You can, there's all sorts of self-help stuff out there. Mm -hmm. And so you start thinking in a different way because you understand that thinking's catabolic. Ah, there goes the stress again. Whoa, so maybe I should do some meditation because that reverses the stress of the mental stress. So the biggest problem I see with people is they have brain viruses. That's the biggest issue. They have a brain virus. They can't think straight uh, because they have this brain virus. And so the brain virus is uh, diametrically opposed to life affirmative principles. We must align our thoughts and our actions and our communities and be a good steward and a good leader to correct the imbalances that are potentially going to engulf us and make us have a very bad day, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to align ourselves to the higher frequencies of harmony and peace, peace and harmony. This is what we all truly want. Um, and so you got plenty of time to do that at home, exercise, roll around on the ground, do my, do my Qigong. It's all free on my YouTube. If you want to upgrade and get my stress management course and get the book for free, you know, you get the, you, know, you get the book costs money and the stress management course with six hours of training in it comes for wow. free. And all you need, all you need to do to completely change your life. Right. And so, uh, that what you implement priceless to me. Yeah. That sounds invaluable. Right. Well, cause, cause look, this is the evolution of consciousness that we're only healthy to the degree we're conscious and we're only conscious to the degree we're healthy. And you, my friend, you look like an anomaly in today's world, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Well, I mean, honestly, you're, you're in good shape. You're clear thinking, clear skin, ready to rock and roll. Got the eye of the tiger. Show, <laughs> show me 10 of those motherfuckers. I want them on my team, right? Bam. Right? We I'll have to join away. your team. I'd love to join your team because I look for people just like you all the time to uh, coincide with and do projects with and stuff because I think um, mastermind alliances are brilliant. And I think um, gravitate towards – those that think like you, I think it just automatically happens anyway. And when I find diamonds in the rough, I always gravitate to them because I, I, I feel alienated sometimes. because I can't talk to so many people about certain things like this. So it's been super refreshing to talk to you because you get it. You're like, you're like the exponent of 10. That's what I look for. And sadly, we are the exception as opposed to the norm. And we should be the norm and not the exception in society. But that's, but, and that's happening right now, Kevin. Yeah. This, this whole... This is the transformation of consciousness. It's right now. Yeah. Everybody slow down. They can pay attention. They're, they're consuming podcasts and, and content like this everywhere. You're right. So yeah. and now's the time. I'm not shitting my pants. I love hip hop. I'm on all the hip hop artist stuff right now. And people are freaking out. I'm like, yo, don't freak out, man. Call <laughs> in forth, you know, call in forth the light, baby. The light, <laughs> the good news. Absolutely. And I, and I call know, the news. People are like, don't you watch the news? I'm like, no, I don't watch the bad news. I just call it the bad news. I've been calling it the bad news for 20 years. I'm like, I don't watch the bad news. Fill me in. What's going on? <laughs> I'm like, it's all smoke and mirrors anyway. It doesn't matter what I say or do. Um, they're just going to say what they want and manipulate your brain to believe in what they want you to believe. So I'm like, I, I have better time. 
my time can be better served doing other things and I choose not to buy into it. So when you're saying eliminate it, that's, that's just like speaking to the choir for me. Yeah, it's such now, a great time to be alive. It is. Now I have a question. We're going to have to wrap up here because we've been talking for a while. I got a question for you before we leave. I ask this of everybody at the very end. Do you eat ice cream? And if you do, what's your favorite flavor? <laughs> well, I, I, I got, I got, I got pensive because you asked me the flavor, and so <laughs> uh, do I eat ice cream? Yes, my body can handle some, some pasteurized dairy as long as it's from a legit source. So I get, I get mine from Strauss, and Strauss has some huh? pretty, pretty badass, pretty badass creamery there. Um, it digests. So again, I don't recommend you know pasteurized dairy for everybody. Yeah. But but um, but truth be told, I do. And when I was training, bro, when I was getting in my fighting weight, you know mm -hmm. this because I think I gained the pounds back just because I'm just not training as much uh, anymore, and that definitely was my fighting weight. But uh, I would train all day fasted, and I think I was on I was no, on some caffeine. I was on some caffeine too, some yerba mate. Some caffeine and uh of course my body likes the tobacco the 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 hop the south american snuff have you ever done that no i've heard of it never did it yeah it's a it's a beast so <laughs> so and then i would have one meal one meal a night one meal okay. a day approximately oh, and man. that's that's not enough to sustain me i needed i need i need a, a little bit more so i would keep the ice cream around <laughs> <laughs> and i'm a i'm I'm a eat before you go to bed guy. Oh wow! <laughs> the the, the cop the cops are out. Co yeah, I break all the rules. How about that? Hey man, if you can look like you and break the rules, I say break them. <laughs> yeah, again, I've got my I've got my own alchemical structure of what I was doing, but I'll eat a pint sometimes. You know, especially if I need to pack on those calories. Yeah. And uh, um. And so, but otherwise, I don't crave it. I don't mainline it every night. Strauss, I think their vanilla chocolate swirl probably tastes the best, but they don't sell it in the quart. Oh, man. I guess you got to get a half gallon of it then. <laughs> <laughs> I like to usually buy it in the quart. And okay. so, because the gold stuff, it ain't cheap, right? You yeah. Know? Yeah, totally. And so, and so, uh, so I like to save a little bit of money. I, I usually get their mint chocolate chip. They only have five, five, five flavors in, uh, and I'm not a vanilla guy. And I, I got two bees that just came in my house. What's up guys? Have you ever seen Vanishing of the Bees? The movie? Uh, is that a movie? Yeah, it's about how colony collapse occurred and the GMOs killed all the yeah. bees and they disappeared. Oh man, it breaks my heart to watch it. But I've seen yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that's why I do what I do. That's why I do what I, I, I haven't seen that movie, but I've interviewed Jeffrey Smith, who's the big guy on GMOs, and I work yeah. with Dave Murphy from Food Democracy now. I'm, I'm pretty well versed in that. That's why yeah. I recommend people get on my nutrition program. You got, you got organic nutrients coming to your door. Get into the breath work, because remember, the first form of nutrition is sunlight and breath. Mm -hmm. So optimize your breathing. And to answer your question, because we got sideways on uh, – the biohacking on the breath work. I went to the biohacking conference with Dave Asprey last year, mm -hmm. and their big talk was the um, optimization of the mitochondria, and you know how the cold immersion you know helps with that, and uh, and then also with the breathing. So breath work increases mitochondrial function. Mm -hmm. Cold water increases mitochondrial function. Sunlight increases my grounding, increases mitochondrial. Mm -hmm. Because it's all just energy, and you're all yeah. just raising your 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 vibration, right? Yep. You you raise your vibration, you're impervious to lower vibration elements, right? Very good point. Yeah, and that's how you're going to antidote any outward exogenous threat, right? I love the, the word final, exogenous. <laughs> if we're if we're in if we're in the final throes and things get gnarly then you're going to have to raise your consciousness above what's happening. Um, Absolutely. And that also goes... I mean, no with, matter what. But I think, the, I think the stars and the astrology, just to go full weirdo woo-woo woo on you, I think the, 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 the astrology and the stars are in a good place 
for you to align with what beauty you want to see on the world, what peace you want to have in your heart. And you align with that during these portals. And maybe you get the dimensional shift where the world goes one way because this is the cutting edge of quantum physics, right? There's multiple, you know, uh, 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 parallel uh, universes. And so you get the dimensional shift and then other, other people don't. And then we build a society that comes from your heart because ultimately we're creating um, out of our mind's eye and we mm -hmm. have to watch what we're creating. So do you want to vibrate into the world that, you know, has more pain and grievance or do you want to vibrate out of that? Just look at any religious iconography or uh, I love that photo of the I am consciousness. You can Google it. The I am consciousness. It's, it has like you meditating and then there's the Christ consciousness over it and then it opens up into a rainbow of white light with the God consciousness and it's just all the connection. And I've done enough DMT and ayahuasca to realize that that's the truth. Then let's just keep grounding that. Just keep grounding that. Just what? Just because you say so. Mm -hmm. Just because it's better than saying we're fucked. How about that? <laughs> well, I, I, mean, I hate to sound cliche, but Mahatma Gandhi put it best years ago when he said, "Be the change that you want to see in the world." It's that simple. And if you apply that principle to everything, and you really firmly believe it, and put all your heart and soul into it, you can create change on a global scale. And you can achieve anything. Anything is possible as long as your thought pattern is strong enough and in direct alignment with that which you want. And I try to tell people that. So I'm blue in the face every single day. But we live with around well, you can't so many negative people. What's you can't that? tell people that. You can't tell, tell people that. I try. You can, only, you can only have good content and then freak them the fuck out and then they'll think <laughs> about it differently. Well, Anyways, I didn't mean to cut you off. but No, it's all right. It's all right. We actually have to get rolling. And Troy, thank you so much for being a guest today. This has been amazing chatting with you. Please tell everyone where they can find you. Talk, tell them where you can find your book and what, you're, what you got coming up. Obviously, you're not going to be doing any talks anywhere because we're not allowed to people. But what do you have coming up? And talk to you about, about your book and where they can find you and your book and et cetera. So TroyCasey.com, RippedIt50Book.com, Instagram, Certified Health Nut, Certified Health Nut YouTube channel. I'm on social media a lot creating a lot of free content there get the book it comes with a lot of great stuff and and uh um i will be going on tour as soon as everything gets lifted so i'll be traveling and uh and i'm also gonna i do men's work here and uh i'll be doing men's work live i think i'm gonna start tomorrow night um so friday nights at like 5 30 p.m we'll do it and uh We'll have a really cool structure, share and, and, and keep everything moving along. Because I found that that was an incredible service uh, when I did men's work. Men just need to feel connected and be okay with just being men. The suicide rate's a little scary right now for men. Yeah. So, and, and bring real brass tacks tools. Some breath work, some uh, Qigong Kung Fu type movements, just simple, keep it super simple. And then... Um, maybe some dream purpose and legacy with one guy to help him pull in his, 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 his legacy. And so people witness how to exercise that, how to, how to do that. And then go in with some share around the fire and call it a night, right? Everybody gets, depending on how many guys are on the zoom, um, everybody gets, uh, you know, two to three minutes and, and share what's on their heart, you know, keep it real. And uh, I noticed that when people can just speak stuff out or listen to other men that it, going through the same thing or they had that experience in the past maybe they have some wisdom it ends up being really good medicine for us guys and uh so i'm gonna do look out for that online i think we're gonna go with the man club or man with club <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you like that man with club that sounds awesome reminds me of like a, a bam bam or something like that from the flintstones yeah. from, the club okay. the from like the 5, 500 yeah. bc or something like that but back to the old school yeah Man club, man with man with club. I like it. It's like a I double like that. I like, to, I like to play in words. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, all right, all right. It's, it's been great. Thanks for having me on, bro. Thank you. Yeah, so you betcha. Much. Let's let's do this again sometime. I'd love to interview you again if you're up for open for it. Yeah, anytime. Awesome. I was bored awesome. for this, dude. Awesome. So let's I'm gonna go I'm gonna Instagram. sign. Let's do Instagram live. Oh, let's do it. Absolutely. In the next in the in the next couple of days, let's do it. All right, I'm down 100%. Yeah.
I'll interview you. You can tell us all about your barefoot running. I think oh, that's sweet. fascinating. I would love to chat about that. I'm big into Yeah, this. so we'll just we'll just do that. Text me anytime. We'll do we'll do that. That sounds like a plan to me, brother. Hang tight. I'm gonna get back to you because I wanna I wanna sign off with you in a minute. I'm gonna okay. sign up theoretically right here. This is K Rail, Chief Fitness Advisor for Pine Pond Superfoods and Train Flying Debity. Thank you all for tuning in and listening. Make sure to go to Troy Casey's website. Make sure to go to his Instagram feed, his YouTube feed, and his Facebook. This is the guy that you want to listen to. He's part of the solution. He's amazing. Get his book, Ripped at 50, if you know it's good for you. And make sure to get some pine pollen, too. We don't put any junk or gunk or artificial sweeteners or acetylene potassium in anything that we have at Pine Pollen Superfoods. The good, clean energy, good, clean brain function, good, balanced hormones. That's what you want. That builds lean muscle, and it builds a strong human body. Until next time, this is k recording live. Peace out, everybody. Make sure to hit me up if you have any questions or comments.